Good morning, citizens. Uh, today is day three of our Holy Week meditations. Uh, there is so much significance in this week and what it means for our faith and identity. Uh, we want to invite you to take time with us to reflect on the passion of Jesus and his great act of love on that cross. The question I want us to explore is why specifically the cross? With God's infinite knowledge and wisdom, surely he could have thought of another way beside Jesus dying in such an excruciating and humiliating way? It's a fair question, but the fact that the cross was a chosen instrument God would use to reconcile sinners to himself communicates important truths about the reality of sin and the purpose the cross served in our redemption. An attribute of God that is emphasized throughout the Bible is his holiness. It means he is holy other. It speaks of his absolute perfection. It is what makes him worthy of our lives and our worship. And this quality of holiness is inherent in his other characteristics. So his love is holy. His anger is holy. His justice is holy. And his goodness is holy. And so the story of the gospel starts first with this overwhelming reality of a good and holy God who created everything for himself and for us to enjoy with him. The gospel, which means good news, is only good in light of the sobering truth of the bad. Adam and Eve were deliberate in their decision to eat the forbidden fruit. Wanting autonomy, they severed ties with their creator. Naturally, we have the same inclination. Sin was an absolute disruption and vandalization of the good things that God created. It wreaks, it wreaks havoc in every facet of our existence. The dysfunction we feel so deeply in ourselves and in this world is a result of sin that created a massive chasm that disconnected us from the very source of life, peace, and joy. A holy and just God cannot share the same space with unholiness and sin. That is why Apostle Paul says we all fall short and the wages of sin is death. We are all spiritually bankrupt and it's a deficit that we on our own cannot absolve. Religion is humanity's best attempt to close that gap. But the best that religion has to offer is temporary change in our behavior because the fundamental problem is our defective hearts. So how does God solve the problem of sin without destroying us. This is where the cross comes in. God requires justice and payment for our sins. Because the consequences of sins are eternal in nature, the payment needs to be of an eternal kind. John, in his gospel, tells us how this happens in his first chapter. He says that the eternal word of God became flesh. Divinity took on humanity. Jesus was fully man and fully God. In his divinity, he had the ability to absorb the guilt and shame of all of us. And in his humanity, he made payment with his blood and truly died on the cross. That is why even though the cross is horrific, we can call that Friday that Jesus died as Good Friday. Trusting in Jesus' sacrifice on the cross erases our debt of sin. But that only puts our balance at a zero. Not having guilt isn't good enough to be with a holy God. We need righteousness. So the same faith in Jesus also credits to us his perfect and sinless life. Our life is united to Jesus in two ways. In his death, we are forgiven. And in his resurrection, we possess his perfect righteousness. This is why Jesus alone is worthy of our entire lives, worthy of all our praise and honor. We attribute glory to him because he is the one and only unique savior who is able to save you and me. There is truly no one like our Jesus. And as we prepare to sing uh, together, I wanna give us uh, time to reflect on the uniqueness of our savior and king Jesus and the sacrifice that he gave to us on that cross. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we are in awe of your love for us. We thank you for the cross and the forgiveness that is ours in him. May we be filled with joy and awe as we reflect 
on that cross. Now, as we respond in worship, may you receive all the glory and honor. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Glory be to God, the Son. 